Hello, fellow Scratchers. Welcome back to episode two of my devlog, building an RPG a role-playing game in Scratch. This project is destined to be one huge epic tutorial, so to ensure I get things right before the official tutorials begin, I'm documenting my journey so you can join in the fun. Last time I shared how I managed to get a working tile scrolling engine and began work on an awesome level editor. But there were problems, specifically gaps appearing between tiles. Gosh, I mean, look at this tree! So stay tuned for a look at how this can be fixed, and later on find out why collision detection in this project almost brought me to tears. Yes, it's true. Are you ready? Let's delve in. Well, let's start with these ugly tile edges. I knew when I picked this tile set that this would be an opportunity to try something new. Many of the tiles are not full squares, but instead have transparent masked regions and only look good when they're layered on top of another full tile. The existing tile grid system I have only supports a single layer of tiles, but it's no big deal to duplicate that up and then have a way to set which layer I want to edit in the editor. Here I am editing layer 1, the bottom layer. Once the grass is placed down, I can switch to layer 2 using the number 2 key on my keyboard and begin laying down the tree again. Oh yes, this is much better. Do you see how the grass shows through the edges of the tree? Perfect. Let me do the same for the raised area below. Smooth out our layer 1 and then on layer 2 brush in the raised grass area again. Super! I'm really liking that. And it doesn't stop with these costumes. We can also now bring in one of the larger structures, like this awesome looking house. As you can see, the layering works great. Now I'll just stop there, as I don't have a lot of room, but what I wanted to show you was this. Although having two layers allows us to fix the issue with costumes overlapping, we could take this further. What if we were walking behind this house? Shouldn't this high up roof appear layered in front of the player? The same goes for this tree, right? Well, watch this. I'll remove the upper portion of the house from layer 2 and introduce the new layer 3. If we assume our player is standing on layer 2, then everything we paint on layer 3 is above them. And so it is. We can create this really fun illusion of depth. We can walk in front of the house, but also behind it. So cool. Layer 3 is in front of the player. This same applies to this tree. That makes the level so much more immersive. You might realise quite quickly that certain tile costumes will consistently need placing on the same layers, so to speed up the placement I added a cool feature to assign a default layer to each tile type in the tile palette. See that the ground tiles are all on layer 1, the tree tops layer 3, and the tree trunk on layer 2. And you'll love this, I can change the default layer right within the editor just by tapping the number keys. Cool stuff! So let's see this in action. I can switch to auto layer mode and lay down a tree. To confirm it worked, we just check we can walk around it. What a cool feature! But I can't help but wish there was a way to speed up tile placement especially for these larger assets that are constructed from many, many smaller tiles. It just gets so tedious. In our Mario tutorial we introduced tile auto-arranging, do you remember that? Where tiles would automatically switch as we drew to make them fit together correctly. That was sweet. But for a tile set of this complexity, it might be tricky. But because the tiles are already laid out in the same order we want to lay them down, I came up with another idea to make this work. I think you're going to love this too. What I can do is hold down space before I start drawing. And then as I move across with my mouse, the selected tile in the tiles palette also switches in the same direction I move. This way, in no time at all, I can lay down an entire house. Wow, look at that. And it's done it with all the correct layers too. So cool. Also, if I move into some free space, see how I can press space and just move my mouse around, so even without drawing, I can switch costume. This way I can pick out the exact costume I'm after without having to click over in the palette to the right. This also works for more intricate structures. I can choose when to move on to the next tile costume as I draw, 
as it follows an easy to predict pattern. Well, since we can change costumes so easily now, we can even work full screen without having the need to have the palette visible. Now that is really useful. And I can still pick to use any tile visible on the screen using the Tile Picker E key, and then continue to work from there. So the building process is super optimised now, which is fantastic news for us. Imagine how much faster we will be able to put together and try out our RPG worlds. Yeah! Of course, there are still a few layering combinations that are just not possible with three layers, so we need to just work around them for the time being. Clever level design has always been a big part of tile-based adventure games. Man, this is all looking so, so cool. I just can't wait to make this into a game. Are you as excited as me? <laughs> yeah! Okay guys, the editor is really shining, so I decided it was time to focus on the actual player and their movement in the game. Or more specifically, where they can't walk due to a tile collision. Now because we are stamping costumes, we don't have the luxury of using Scratch's sprite touching blocks. Instead we have to go off the tile grid list contents. We know which tiles our player is touching, and we work from there. The simplest approach would be to tag each tile costume with a straightforward I am solid, I am not solid status. Then we can calculate if the tile we touch is solid, we stop the player, and if not we can walk on. But in the tile sheet that I chose, things are not that clear cut. These tiles for example are certainly not fully solid, but they do have solid edges it appears. So my next idea was to define which edges of each tile are solid. I coded up an awesome edge editor right into the level editor, so I could quickly sketch on the solid edges per tile. And then I got to work scripting up the collision code. And no, it wasn't quite as straightforward as I'd hoped. But I got there, and here we go. I can tell you, things are working pretty sweet. Well, for some time at least, I kept this design. But problems have emerged. Some of the tiles in the tile set don't fit with my edge collision concept, as the collision edges in the costumes don't align to the edge of the sprite at all. This was very upsetting. After all that hard work, and I was a little stumped as what best to do. So I thought if the tiles were designed with half tile collisions in mind, maybe defining which quarters are solid and which are not would be a better system. Yes, I had to recode it all. And no, it didn't work. I'd sadly forgotten I'd need to factor in the cases where the collision edges were paper thin. Rubbish! Never mind. So what, back to edges? Perhaps we could use edges but segment them into half edges? Oh man, this is getting far too complicated! And then I had a different idea. How about rather than edges, we switch to nine pins in each tile. Each pin could be solid or not. And the rule is that the player's hitbox cannot pass through a pin, as long as the hitbox is bigger than the distance between the pins. Then we could never pass through a gap. Yeah? That was it. This was a system I was happy enough with, it worked, and that was not deadly hard to script. Oh, thank goodness. And thank you for watching my devlog. If you're excited to get started with the actual tutorial, then smash that like button now and let me know what you are most excited about in the comments below the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel too. I'm thinking we might begin next week with a tutorial on the text engine, as that will be super useful both for this RPG and many other projects besides. So yeah, subscribe and make sure to check that bell icon too. In the meantime, work on this RPG continues and with the help of Crystal Peeper 7, do check out his YouTube channel, we have begun to expand and update our tile set too. But that's it for today, I hope you have a great week ahead and scratch on guys!